Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to answer Crystal's question in the design hacking group. And she was looking at Julie Stoyan's site, and she wanted to know how she could make the animation that Julie had on her page. Now, I'll tell you right now, this page was built on WordPress, not on ClickFunnels, but just about anything you can do in WordPress, we can duplicate inside of ClickFunnels, except, of course, the blogging functionality, which is uh, proprietary to WordPress. But what she was looking at is how when when you hover over these objects, how they just bounce a little bit one time. So I started looking at the site and I thought, well, as long as I'm doing that, there's a couple more things I might as well go through. One is how to recreate this header up here at the top and then also how to place a Julie's image over here on the side and keep it centered so that when you, when you pull down the size, it stays in there fixed properly. And so that's, that's very important. And that's something that uh, I see a lot of people struggling with is getting the images to show up, especially background images properly. And then I saw this down here and I thought, well, let's just do this as well. How do you take these images and this button and push them outside of this column? So let's go in and let's take a look at first what I did on this. And again, I will show you what happened as I size this down. Julie stays right where she is supposed to. And if I get rid of the inspector thing, you're going to see she lines up exactly how she did on the original. And as I bring it down, it gets to a certain size and then it just kind of sticks there. And then let me just open that inspector back up. And then, of course, we also have our things bouncing here. And then down here, we built out this column as well. So let's just jump into the editor. And the first thing I did is I came in and I turned off all of the CSS so you can see what everything looks like. And then I'll turn it on as we begin to build because uh, let me just show you the CSS. It's all blue right now because it's all commented out. But there's really not that much. When you take out the comment lines and the spaces, it's probably not more than about 30 lines of code to do absolutely everything on this page. And once I get done, you should be able to do this on your own. So let's just take a look here. Uh, at the very top section and we're just going to open up the section and for the most part in here we got a grayish background color and then we got top padding of five and bottom padding of five and what that's going to do is going to give us a little bit of edge in here between the line and the outside so if I bring up the bottom you're going to see that's where that is showing up and I'm pretty sure that is it for this yes it is and then we're going to come into the row and in this case here we have a two column row and we're going to click on that and what we have here is we have pixel I and mean, we have 10 paddings uh, 10 pixels of padding on the top and the bottom and again that's going to give us a space between that bottom line and the words inside of the nav elements and then we're going to go to advanced and all we do here is we say border on the top and bottom we want a solid one pixel so let's say we made it five pixels so you can see how big it is there so we just need it one pixel and whatever color this is is what I pulled off of Julie's site now the one thing here we want to look at is the CSS because you see these lines only come out this far and we want them to go all the way to the edge so this is our first bit of CSS we're going to come in and I will just turn it back on and you can see in the background uh, what it does. So what I did is I commented out the text, which then will turn the code back on. And so all we're saying here is go to this section and go to the container inner inside of that section and make it 100% width. Now let me just show you what that looks like in the code itself by going into the inspector tool. And we have here our container inner. So here is our section right there. Let me scroll up there. This is our section. And then inside here is the container inner. And all we're saying is give it a width of 100% because otherwise it wants to be a width of 1170 pixels. And of course we don't want that. We want it to go full width across the entire screen. So we change that out and we make that a hundred percent. And now if you're not quite clear where you get that section from, you got to come in here, um, click on the gear, come down to the hashtag, and it will give you your section right there. You just have to add on at the end the element inside of it. So you have your big section element, and then inside of it you have another element, and this element has the class of container inner. 
So you have to remember to add that in and then width of 100% and important. Not absolutely sure you need the important tag on there, but in a lot of cases, if something's already set inside of ClickFunnels in order to override it, you need that a lot of times to override it. So if you type something in and you're like, I absolutely know this should be working and it's not, usually it's because you need to add the important tag to override the CSS that's native to ClickFunnels. So that is it for uh, the top here, except uh, let's take a look here at the nav elements. So I just typed in here, home, about, and create your laptop life. Of course, if you have a URL, you could put it in there, or you could have it scroll to a section down here just by clicking on the scroll to section. And you can have it open in a same window or in the new window. And then because we only have three on this side, we have to go to advanced and we're going to say we want three links here. We want it bold and we want it to align to the right because if we aligned it to the left. Of course, it'd be way over there. So we're aligning this to the right. And then on the other side, same thing. We got four different links in here, actually five, five different links in here because one of them is actually this little image. And so you just got your funnel gorgeous, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll show you over here. We just set that bold, align this one to the left so it goes back to the center. And then uh, down here at the bottom, you set your link color and you set your font size. But right here is a little image of a magnifying glass. And how I did that is whether you're inside of a Mac or a PC, you can open up an element. I don't know how to do it on a, on a PC, but on a Mac, you got to go over to your preferences and you got to find this thing and you can tell it to display on your, on whatever they call this bar up here at the top. And it says, do I want to save? No, actually I don't. Um, so you do this and we can show the emoji and symbols and that'll take a second to open up here. And when it does, you just come in and you got all kinds of different images and things you can work with. In this case here, I want to just put in magnify and then double click on that element right there. And what it does is then just pops it right in there. And you can use this anywhere in any kind of text element inside of ClickFunnels is you can just put that in there and it sees it essentially as a text element. And so we have that there. Now on Julie's site, you have a couple other things here. You have these little bars in between, and then you also have it so that when you hover over, and those bars are colored, and when you hover over this, it changes to this particular color, which is the same color as the little bar. So let's put those into ours. And so, well, and you can see here, I already have them in there. So let's go over here. Let's go back up to our CSS. And first off here, let's uh, again, put the commenting back the way it should be. Now, in order to create that little upright bar, we're going to use what is known as a pseudo element. You can use a pseudo element to inject something into the code before or after an element that you're looking at. So in this case here, the elements themselves, each one of these elements has a class of nodo nav item. And I will show you that. Let me right click here. We will inspect this. And so you see right here, each one of these elements has the class of nodo nav item right there. And so all I'm going to say is before each one of these, this class, we want to put in the content and that content is the upright bar like that. It's just right on your computer. It's on mine. It's above the return button. And then we want to say here padding right. So actually, let me just uh, comment this out. So I take that out and all those go away. And you can see it puts in a bunch of space when it puts it in there, puts in a bunch of space with it. But then I also said, let's put in some more padding because otherwise it's not going to be far enough apart. And then because Julie had them colored that same color, I put in the color as well, just so it was getting close to what she had. Now, the next thing we're going to say is on hover. So again, we're using the same thing here, the nodo nav item. But after that, we're adding the A because what we wanted to say is you see the A right here. We're saying as we hover over that A, which is the actual word. So here's the word home right there. We're saying as you hover over that word home, the A stands for anchor text. When we hover over that, we want it to change color. And so that's exactly what we're doing here is so anytime somebody hovers over that anchor text, 
it will change to the same color as the little bars. And then the last one we have here is just that last item. It didn't, you couldn't really see it very well. Let me just uh, uh, comment that out. So you see here now, I took away the little bit of a white shadow that I put around it. So I'll put it back in right now. Just keep watching up here. See, now you're going to see it kind of makes it glow a little bit. So it stands out a little bit. And all I said there was text shadow. So put a text shadow around it of zero pixels, one pixel, one pixel, and make it white. Zero pixel is your horizontal. So don't go over it all. Just stay right behind it. Uh, your one pixel axis is going to be one pixel down. And I mean, that's on your Y axis. And then one pixel of spread. So it's going to spread out just a little bit. And that's what I found looked best was just doing it like that. So that takes care of everything we did for this top nav bar. Now, the next thing we want to, want to look at is the picture of Julie. If we go back to hers, um, obviously, I did not put in everything uh, on her page. I just did the stuff that I thought was important. This is just an image, so it's not like you got to come in and make the four columns. This is just a text element. And we already started talking a little bit about the image of her. And um, all I did in the case of this image is, let me just uh, right click and inspect this. I didn't even bother saving it pulling it off of here, saving it to my hard drive, saving it into ClickFunnels or anything else. All I did is I came in here and I found where that, uh, where the element is. So this, this div right here, this section is uh, housing, as you see here, turns blue as I put my mouse over it. And then it has a background of Julie's picture. All I did is I came down here and I did a right click and I said, copy the link address. And then inside of ClickFunnels, when I made my section, I just came in and I just pasted the address right there. And then I did full width, full width and height to take up as much area as it possibly could. Now that did not fix everything. As you're seeing here, it's, it's, it, well, actually it looks pretty good here. So it, it looks just fine right here, but it doesn't work fine. And um, until we fixed a little bit about it here, so we're going to just put our comment back in there. Now you see how she got taller. And let me just comment this back out real quick. See what we're going to say here is we want to position this background image to the right and center. So we want it all the way over here to the right and we want it center top to bottom. And then we also want it to cover the entire area. And by covering the entire area, it can actually go outside of the box if needed. Okay, because there's a difference between cover and contain. And we'll go over here to W3 Schools. And for cover, it says, resize the background image to cover the entire container, even if it has to stretch the image or cut a little bit off one of the edges. So it'll actually stretch outside of the container if needed to be able to properly put that inside of the box. And so that's why we say we want it centered top to bottom and we want it all the way to the right. So now if something gets cut off, chances are it's going to probably be on this far left side here and we'll have her centered top to bottom. And so we will again, we'll take these out and that's the way it looked on Julie's side. And so that's why I wanted to make sure I got it looking the same here. Now, the next thing we need to look at is these little bouncing images. And again, I have them over here, but like I said, mine bounce a little bit more and I'm gonna have to look into why that is. It could be that actually my container is taller. That might be a function of it that we can take a look at here. So let's go into the code and let's just take a look at how I built this first. Actually, that container is not that tall. Hmm. Maybe it's because there's space here. That could be can, that it can come up and take up that space, but that's something I'll have to explore a little further. But all I did here is four column row. Top one here, I just put in an image. And again, I just stole the image address right out of Julie's site and just uh, plunked it down in here. Otherwise, there's really nothing else in here. Center aligned, that's pretty much it. And then down here, we just have a text element. And let's see here, I just have it going to google.com, doesn't matter. And then otherwise, let's take a look at this. Let's go into the settings. And I set the color again, took that off of Julie's site, set the font family that she had set. 
And then um, font size, all that, again, all just stuff I just took off of what Julie had. And otherwise, the only other thing we did in here was we put in that icon that for some reason, the, no, the icon picker should go before. Oh, I know, that's just, that's not even, that's just, that's just text. That's just the carrot from my uh, keyboard. That's all that is. Um, so that's it, it's just one little tiny text element. So now let's see what do we got to do to manipulate that. And we'll come down here, again, fix our comments. And so what we're going to say here is we got cal left 18, cal enter, cal center left 163, cal enter. Because right now I have two of them. So here's our cal left, here's our cal center left. You just got to remember that as you're building it is that each one of these columns is going to have a different ID on it. So let's uh, come up to our columns and we'll come down to our four column row and we'll just look at this. We'll open it up, come down, click on our hashtag. And that's all you gotta do is grab it right there. It gives you the whole thing, the entire call enter, not like the one up top where we had to put in, I don't even remember what it was anymore, column enter or something it was called. Um, so that's what we have there. So let's uh, just take a look at this again. So I guess it was container enter up at the top. So what we're saying here is when somebody hovers on this column, we want to do something. So we say when somebody hovers on this column, we want to create an animation that is going to last one second. And we want that animation name to be bounce. Okay, so I had to pause for a little bit here and actually do some research because I realized that what I have here shouldn't even work because I'm calling an animation and that animation's name is bounce, but I don't define that animation anywhere. All I did is I looked at what Julie did, I put in the word bounce, it worked, and I didn't think about it any further. What it should be doing, this animation name should be calling what, um, let me pull it up over here, should be calling this right here, something like this. So. What this is, is this tells the animation what to do. So in this case here, I'm saying animation hover in one second. Over here, I put these on two different lines. I put the duration and the name on two different lines, but you can do a shortcut on that and put them together on one line. So I'm saying here, call this, this name, this animation name called hover in and do what it's going to do over one second. Well, in this case here, over that one second, it would move this element, this element up here, it's going to move that, uh, it's going to move it down 250 pixels is what it does. So uh, here, let me just show you what it does on the screen. Um, there'll definitely be another video on this. So when you hover over this, it uh, slides it down and it uh, makes it come in there and it's running a little slow and I'm also in the editor, but um, you, you get the idea. So that's what this does when you call that 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 keyframe is it just moves it down and then back back and forth is what it does and then down here at the bottom what it does is it uh, turns the the uh, text on slowly over one second as well but back here i didn't make a keyframe and the only thing i can figure is there must be some sort of built-in animations inside of click funnels that you can call in this case here, one was called Bounce, apparently. I don't know where they are. I don't know if there are any others. But in this case here, it is working, so I'm going to leave it alone because in future videos, I am going to show how to use the keyframes uh, based upon this other thing that I built. Um, so, um, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to leave it alone for today because to answer the question that was asked by Crystal, um, the answer is right here, and it's pretty simple. You don't even have to build any keyframes. Okay, while I was editing the video, I just stopped myself, and I just said, I, I can't leave this without fixing it. And so um, that was last night I was editing it. And now I got around to finally uh, doing it today, um, the uh, the shooting of the video here, because it really took me about five minutes to fix this problem, because let's just go take a look at Julie's again. When you come in, what it does is it goes up slowly for maybe about half a second, and then it just kind of slams back down to the bottom, then bounces up a little bit, and then back down to the bottom. And that's what we're going to do on ours. And I left everything alone here. I left this bounce 
the name of the animation is balanced, which we're going to pick up down here. And I accept, I changed it to three quarters of the second, which is 750 milliseconds. So let's just save this and test it and see what ours looks like. And then I'll go through the rest of what the keyframes were there. So over three quarters of a second, it's going to rise up some, and then it's going to slam back down to the bottom, rise up a little bit more, and then back down again. So there you go. Very similar to what Julie's was. I'm not in Julie's, am I? No, okay. Just want to make sure. Hers is a little bit sharper, and you can just play around with it a little bit if you want to to get that to work out. So let's just take a look at the CSS on this. And again, here we are. We're just saying that when somebody hovers over one of these columns, what we want to do is we want to create an animation. In this case here, it's 750 milliseconds, which is three quarters of a second. And then we got animation name of bounce. And then down here, we're going to say at keyframes. And then we're going to say bounce, which matches up with the name of it right here. So we know which one of the keyframes we are calling. And keyframes are pretty simple. You just basically, you say... Um, you know, however long, you know, 50% of the way through, I want this to change. 25% of the way through, I want that to change. And the, the way through is obviously based upon the seconds that you have the duration set for. So in this case here, we're going to say that 70% of the way through the three quarters of a second, we want it to be moving up. We want it to take that long to move up 20 pixels. So from zero to 70%, it's going to go from top margin of zero up to top margin of minus 20 pixels. And then what it's going to do is over the next 5%, from 70 to 75, it's going to drop down, back down to zero very quickly. And then, excuse me, over the next 20 percent from 75 to 95 over the next 20 percent is going to move up 10 pixels and then again for that last five it's going to slam it back down to the bottom so it's going to give it the illusion of bouncing up and down like that and that's really as simple as it is and like i've said before you can use these to make all kinds of animations on your screen move stuff all over have things sliding across the screen you can even make it so that things will change in shape as they're moving around on your screen so there you go. I just want to jump back in and put that in so you knew exactly how to get that set up. So I'm just going to keep moving on then because the next thing here is we're going to say is as we hover over these columns again, and again in this case here you would have four of them, we're going to say that when you hover over it that it's going to change color and it's going to change to this color right here. So if we go to this, you can see here it bounces up and down and it turns to that grayish color from the blue. So that's what that says right there. And where you get this link number from is we'll go right in here, right click. We're going to inspect on this. Now you can put in uh, basically you'd have to come up here. You have to go. Um, you'd have to find the ID of this. L headline wrapper and we'd have to say temp paragraph 35954 and then put an A after it so we knew that it designated the anchor text for this or you can just come in here and every single link inside of uh, ClickFunnels I'm pretty sure it has its own ID and in this case here it is link 10241 is the ID for that so you just right click that copy it out and then plunk it down into your code and that's a lot easier than having to go um, put in the whole uh, whole naming of the CSS and all that stuff so now let's take a look at the last element that I wanted to recreate and so what we have here is we have a column with a thin line around the outside we have some text in the middle we got a bunch of padding around here and then essentially all this is is an image at the top that we push up and a um, and a button at the bottom that we're going to pull down and so again here is my version of it um, in her case there I guess she had a little bit more of an animation on there I could have put that in but I haven't and then we have to deal a little bit with the spacing on this element so let's take a look what it looks like with the CSS turned off and so let's come into this column by going up to our columns coming down to our first column 
And in this case here, I don't have any top padding, bottom padding, anything like that set. But what we do have is we have a full border, solid, one pixel, and whatever this color amounts to. So then inside of that, we have, we have this text element. Let's just click on that. And let's see, font size of 13, color, all that stuff. What else did we do in here? At a top margin of 30. Line height of 1.5 EM. I wanted to boost that up a little bit like she had. And otherwise, that was pretty much what we had here. Like I said, 30, 30 pixels on the top. Just to pull it down a little bit. And then let's take a look at this image. Negative 30 on that to be able to push it out proud of the top. And that should be the only thing we have set here. Center, of course. And then let's take a look at the button at the bottom. Again, color the background, color the text, what the text said. And I would guess here at the end we have an icon. I knew I had an icon of a carrot somewhere. And so we have our carrot down here afterwards and FA angle right. And actually just, um, what did I put in there? Let me see here. I think it was just, just arrow what I typed in and there there it is just click on that so now let's take a look at the CSS and see what we had to do there it's uh, not much at all so we're just gonna turn this back on so for the image at the top let me skinny this down some image at the top we what we had to do is let me turn this all back off is you see here that the line goes right through it. So I had to set a background color to the same color as the background of this section. So we'll turn that back on. But now you're gonna see this is awfully wide because that is how big the actual element is. You see how much room is taking up there. We needed to tell it that we want that to be skinnier. So we're gonna come back to our CSS and scroll down to the bottom here and I just figured out width of 120 looked about right and so now as we hover over it it's skinnier but it went over to the left hand side but it is skinnier so it's taking up much less room and then we'll go back to the CSS and then all I said here was let's set a margin on it so that the margin is zero on the top and the bottom, whenever you have just two two uh, variables in here, it's not variable, uh, whatever it is, uh, you, when you have only two of them in there, if it's, the first one would be the top and the bottom, the second one would be left and right. So we have zero top and bottom margin, and the right and left margin is set to auto, which means it figures out what the whole area is and divides it in half. So whenever you want to center anything in CSS, use that trick that works a lot of times. You can also use text align center if it's a text element. And there's also a, uh, another alignment that I'm drawing a blank on right now. Uh, but so that, that gets it into the center here. And again, if we take that out, you see how much wider it is. And so that's why I had to skinny down the width a little bit. And then as far as the button goes is minus 30 pixels to push that down out of the bottom. Be nice if ClickFunnels had bottom margin or margin bottom built in like it has margin top, but it doesn't. So that's that. Um, uh, you know, so I came in here to show how to do this. And as you saw halfway through, I realized that technically this shouldn't be working without a keyframe. But look forward to the video I'm going to shoot on this animation over here because there we will go in depth on talking about keyframes but I wasn't really ready to talk about that today but you're gonna see some pretty cool stuff there and I'm also working on a trick where we can have text where it's going to print out the words like a typewriter and go back and forth I'm working on that as well so if you got any questions just let me know